Welcome to our channel Storm Rider. The 2026 KDX-3 Batch 2 Aegis Destroyer marks a significant leap forward in naval warfare technology, showcasing South Korea's commitment to strengthening its blue water naval capabilities. Developed by Hyundai Heavy Industries, this advanced warship is a refined and heavily upgraded version of the original KDX-3 Sejong the Great class destroyers. While at first glance it may resemble its predecessor, a closer look reveals a broad array of enhancements that boost its stealth, firepower, electronic warfare capabilities, and overall survivability. Designed with both strategic deterrence and multi-mission flexibility in mind, the Batch 2 ships are among the most formidable surface combatants currently afloat. At the heart of the KDX-3 Batch II's performance is its integration with the latest iteration of the Aegis combat system, the Baseline Niner Newer. This system provides the ship with highly advanced tracking, targeting, and engagement capabilities, enabling it to detect and simultaneously engage hundreds of targets, both aerial and maritime, over long distances. The radar system at the core of this capability is the ANSPY-1D-V, but future iterations may see an upgrade to the SPY-6 radar suite, delivering better resolution, range, and resistance to electronic countermeasures. This makes the Batch 2 Aegis destroyer not just a guardian of the seas, but a critical node in regional missile defense networks, particularly as North Korea continues to advance its missile technology. One of the most notable changes in the Batch 2 version lies in its stealth design. Engineers have worked extensively to reduce the radar cross-section of the ship by redesigning the superstructure, smoothing out external lines, and implementing radar-absorbent materials. While it's impossible to make a ship of this size completely invisible to radar, these modifications significantly reduce its detectability, especially at long ranges. This improved stealth profile enhances survivability in high-threat environments, giving the KDX-3 Batch 2 a tactical edge during both peacetime patrols and combat operations. In terms of size, the destroyer displaces approximately 10,000 to 11,000 tons, placing it among the largest destroyers in the world, rivaling or even exceeding the size of U.S. Arleigh Burke class destroyers. This generous size translates into ample space for sophisticated weapons systems, advanced sensors, and expanded operational capabilities. The hull and deck layouts have been optimized to accommodate more vertical launch cells, up to 128 in total, divided among the Korean Vertical Launching System KVLS, and the US-designed MK-41 VLS. These cells give the destroyer an extremely versatile loadout, including SM-2 and SM-6 surface-to-air missiles, Tomahawk light land attack missiles, anti-submarine rockets, ASROC, and potentially even future hypersonic weapons. The Batch 2 also features improved command and control systems that allow for better integration with Allied forces, particularly with U.S. Navy operations. This is a crucial feature, given South Korea's strategic alliances and its role in regional security. Enhanced data links and network-centric warfare capabilities ensure that the destroyer can act both independently and as part of a coordinated fleet. It's essentially a floating command center, with the computational horsepower and communication tools necessary to lead complex joint operations. From a propulsion standpoint, the KDX-3 Batch 2 uses a combined gas and gas COGAG arrangement, which delivers high-speed maneuverability and sustained cruising capability. While not revolutionary in itself, the engine room has been redesigned to be more efficient, quieter, a key feature. For anti-submarine warfare, and easier to maintain. This propulsion system gives the ship a top speed in excess of 30 knots, with a cruising range suitable for long-duration blue water missions. It's built to stay at sea for extended periods, offering South Korea a genuine force projection platform. One of the more futuristic aspects of the destroyer is its preparation for future technological upgrades. It has been built with modularity in mind, allowing for the relatively easy installation of new weapons systems like directed energy weapons, lasers, railguns, or advanced electronic warfare suites as these technologies mature. This future proofing ensures that the ship will remain operationally relevant for decades, adapting to evolving threats and mission requirements. In terms of crew comfort and operational efficiency, the Batch 2 makes noticeable improvements over its predecessor. Automation has reduced the manpower required to run the ship, while living quarters have been upgraded to improve the quality of life for sailors on long deployments. 
These human-centered upgrades may seem minor in the face of high-tech weaponry, but they have a significant impact on crew morale and operational effectiveness. From a strategic point of view, the KDX-3 Batch 2 isn't just a warship, it's a symbol. Its presence in the region sends a clear message of deterrence to potential adversaries, while also reassuring allies. It can defend against ballistic missiles, strike land-based targets, engage enemy submarines, and operate effectively within multinational task forces. Whether it's participating in humanitarian missions, escorting vital shipping lanes, or serving as a frontline deterrent, the destroyer offers a flexible, powerful platform for a wide range of missions. What also sets the Batch 2 apart is the indigenous content. South Korea has worked to increase the domestic manufacturing and technology share of these ships, with a large portion of the software, hardware, and systems now produced locally. This not only boosts national pride and economic benefit but also reduces dependence on foreign suppliers, a key consideration in times of conflict or geopolitical tension. In summary, the 2026 KDX-3 Batch 2 Aegis Destroyer represents a remarkable blend of cutting-edge technology, tactical versatility, and forward-looking design. It builds upon the strong foundation of its predecessor while introducing numerous upgrades in stealth, firepower, sensor integration, and crew efficiency. For laymen, think of it as a supercomputer with missile launching capabilities sailing the high seas, capable of defending against incoming threats, launching its own powerful attacks, and coordinating complex missions with ease. For military analysts and strategists, it's a floating fortress designed to tip the balance in regional security. As tensions persist in the Indo-Pacific region, the KDX-3 Batch 2 stands as both a technological marvel and a crucial strategic asset for South Korea and its allies.